This is a different guy. Yeah. Um, Captain, if you just take the first seat. Sure. Do you want him right there? Yeah, why don't you guys take your seats then, so. Okay, if I sit next to you. Do you want me in? Or slide on the edge, Joe, Jim. Yeah, you're fine in that seat right here, though. Can I pull this one up? Sure. All right. All right, today. Okay, if everyone could just go around and just state your name, uh, imagine I'm looking at the record. Certainly. Lieutenant Jerry Zarlinka, Vice President, FOP, Badge 8526. James Zuba, Captain, 3rd District, 6572. Captain Brian Bentley, DET, LEY, 6560, FOP President. Okay, um, we're here on what's now known as OPS case number 19-0142, where there are two complainants, uh, Joseph and Jonathan Workman. Um, they are brothers. Uh, we, on uh, September 11th, 2019, um, I interviewed Captain Zuba, in connection with this and I preface my interview with that statement just in case um, I ask a question that I've previously asked in the initial interview it is for the purpose of either clarifying uh, an answer or response that you gave to that question back on September 11th of 2019 or to determine if the position uh, that you stated during that interview is the same today as when you stated it during the initial uh, interview so uh, Captain, um, you recall, do you recall having a, uh, an encounter with the complainants, Joseph and Jonathan Workman, back on October 15th of 1996? That would have been August. I mean, August 15th yeah. of, 19, yes, of, of, of 20, 2019, because that's his birthday. That's what's going to be off. No problem. No <laughs> problem. On the complaint. And for the purposes of efficiency, um, I'm just going to quickly restate some of the things that you told me in terms of the... Uh, general issues that brought you there that, that day and please uh, feel free to correct me if I misstate something but I believe you stated uh, on that day you were working in a command position for the Feast of the Assumption, is that correct? Correct, Operations Chief. Operations Chief, uh, which I think is a command position or yes, sir. Uh, for that and um, you received um, a call for assistance or base the complaints made a request to have a supervisor come to a scene in, in relation with uh, an encounter they had had with several members of the Cleveland Division of Police who were working that day, correct? The officers called for a supervisor. Right. Um, and I believe that one or, one or more of the complaints requested a supervisor, but they called for a supervisor, if that's your recollection. And so if you can uh, tell me um, how these two brothers, the Workman brothers, first came to your attention and what actions you took uh, as it relates to these two uh, complaints, Joseph and Jonathan Workman. I believe I answered that in a previous interview. Okay. So you, you stated then that um, you were coming to the scene and you encountered these gentlemen and the officers who were in the area of these two individuals informed you that they had been un placed under arrest? Is that still your yes, sir. today? Yes, sir. And do you recall which officer or officers informed you that they had been under arrest at that point? Bush. Bush did that. And this is as the workman brothers are approaching you. The Officers are somewhat behind them at that time. Is that correct? No, they're all surrounding them. They're surrounding them when you first encounter them. Mm -hmm. And and Officer Bush tells you that they're uh, under arrest. Yes, sir. Did he say for what charges? I don't recall that, and I do remember that they weren't in handcuffs. Right. So um, Officer Bush um, was interviewed by Sergeant Sheehan by the City of Cleveland Division of Police Internal Affairs. Uh, division and during that interview he stated that at the, that he did not had not placed them under arrest nor cited them and had no intentions of doing so and it was his understanding that you ordered him to do so um, would that statement by Officer Bush be accurate? No. Okay so his saying that to 
Officer Sheehan in his retort court interview, would he be mistaken in that or lying about that? I would imagine he's just mistaken. Okay. And so I want to show you um, a video that was taken from a business surveillance camera that the Internal Affairs Division obtained and forwarded to me when they returned the file. And I'm going to ask for your responses on what is captured on the video. Now, it doesn't have sound, and I'm sorry that it's kind of small, but what, what's captured here, and correct me, I mean, you aren't there, but these are officers, and the complaints are right here in this, like, kind of on the sidewalk on the doorway, and per the um, officer's statements to Internal Affairs, they were instructing these individuals that they were not allowed to play their guitars um, there, um, and they needed to leave because they didn't have a permit. And just so I can ask some questions on that regard, I'm gonna pause it right here. And as, if you know, is it unlawful for individuals to play their guitars on the on, in a public area like that? In the feast is permitted. The church regulated all entertainment. And so a violation of this church's rule, would that be a criminal offense? As far as I understand, yes. Because within the city of Cleveland, isn't it lawful to do the act they were doing um, if had it not been for the church prohibition against that? Would their actions be lawful? As long as they weren't obstructing. Right. And so the permit that the church holds or held for that feast, did it detail the permit holder's right to curtail otherwise lawful activity by citizens? That's beyond me. Because my understanding from Sergeant Sheehan from the Internal Affairs that the church's permit only granted them two uh, areas of authorization, to block the street and to encumber the sidewalks with certain displays. Okay. So, that being said, how could they control otherwise protected First Amendment speech and actions that per Section 657801 is considered permissible conduct within the city of Cleveland? The way I understand it, the church regulates all the entertainment connected with the feast because it's um, nationalistic. It's like Italian music, the singers, uh, the uh, walking around a cappella groups, uh, the parades, all that's regulated by the church. And it's all donated or they get paid to be there. So to my understanding, they just ask those guys to leave, just go outside the footprint and play. Who, who asked them to leave? As far as I recollect, the, the officers. Right, yes, the officers did ask them to leave. And, and then they, they stated that they had a right to do that. Correct. Which, under city law, they do. Now, uh, is it your opinion that this church can somehow um, supersede 675A01 and A02, which authorize and specifically uh, allows for the behavior that they were doing simply because they have a permit that allows them to block the streets and encumber the sidewalks. So that would make this action, the, uh, an ordinarily lawful action, now unlawful and being subject to being charged or cited for this behavior by the city of Cleveland police. And this seems like this is a private entity asking uh, a governmental entity, this being the police department, to enforce their private rules. Would that be your interpretation? Would, would The fact that they're on the public sidewalk, in the footprint of the permitted area, and they're being asked to just go to the outside of that area, is what you're stating, and when they refuse to do so, then it becomes a lawful action. 
Is that what you're getting at? Well, it was lawful action all along for the codified our ordinance of the city of Cleveland, playing their guitars, including even accepting money or contributions in any kind of type of receptacle, mm -hmm. is all lawful activity. I um, meant, I, I meant to say unlawful when they refused to move. Is well, what I, what I meant to say. The question to that would be, who, who requested them to move? Now, it's my understanding from the various interviews that the other officers have given through IA as well as OPS that it was uh, Captain Zuba who the, the officers saw them playing. They radioed to Captain Zuba and said, are they allowed to do that? And Captain Zuba informed them that only if they have a permit can they do that. There was no complaint from anyone who would be deemed the permit holder about this activity. And so they um, are approached by these officers, asked to leave, and then we'll continue the video because, of course, it doesn't have audio. Okay. But what you'll see is they do begin to leave. Can I add something to it? Just uh, not to uh, draw confusion to this, but him being the uh, top in charge of this actual event, if, let, let me redirect a question, which is the same as what you're saying with the codified ordinance and so forth. When there's an event downtown and vendors who are allowed to do certain things, they have to have a permit to be in a certain area. And the permit is specific to certain areas for certain things. So when the permit for, and I guess this is a gray area, the permit from the church who controls the inside of whatever that boundary is, that's what the permit is for, did not give them permission to be there. I the think permit, that is the question. The permit that they hold doesn't give the permit holder any uh, delineated acts except for those two things that are specifically cited in that permit. They're allowed to block the streets and encumber the sidewalks. Ordinarily under city law, they couldn't do that. That's the only thing it allows them to do. It gives them an exception to already established mm -hmm. procedures and policies. Um, as opposed to the example that you're setting, that to be a vendor within the city of Cleveland, you have to be licensed and hold certain permits. But to be a street performer, you, you have no okay. such requirement to have a permit or anything to do what's okay. conferred. So, con so the considered busting. street performer that I'm aware of also, so I fully understand what you've said. I'm trying to... Street performers, for two different reasons, can be asked to move. And one would be if they're blocking or obstructing. They Correct. can't, they, actually there's three things. They can't be mm -hmm. uh, in front of an ingress or egress area mm -hmm. to cause any type of a blocking. And then they also, if they're disturbing somebody, it only takes a disturbance. Yeah, that is not accurate under the, the uh, codified Cleveland audience. It just restricts certain hours. Um, it has nothing about disturbing. You are correct in terms of uh, blocking it, but um, there's a there is a I, I don't know what the uh, not sure. The that's a schedule right. of events that the church puts on. Go ahead. Right, but I mean that's I mean, you know, and they they regulate the entertainment. They've been doing this festival for a hundred years. Right. But so they, if you have a festival anywhere, and then you get a bunch of guys that are going to just set up a shop and start playing a band and disturbing everybody without the th authorization to be there. That doesn't convert it to a criminal act on behalf of those people. Okay. Because this private this entity may not like them there. They could call the police and see about having them deemed a trespasser, but they but ordinarily protected, constitution protected speech that has also been examined by the city city legislature to determine that this specific act is pro is permissible and permitted under this code. This so, this private entity, and I think my my logic of that is is very sound because going forward, Commander Todd has already determined that the City of Cleveland Police will no longer provide this type of service because of this very issue of trying to enforce private rights or rules with city governmental police action. Yeah, I think the commander is. That's her prerogative. She doesn't want to put her officers in the middle of 
harm's way on any further actions taking place. Now, prior to this, uh, the good captain here states, you know, however many years this event's been going on, and it's been a controlled atmosphere, and that's how it had been done in the past. Right. The, okay. the issue at hand, I, I'm not going to disagree with the ordinance. I agree with you. They have the right to, to play on public sidewalks and so mm -hmm. forth. But it's within a, a permitted area that they they purchased that area for this. But not, to, uh, not for could, the purpose of I, controlling First okay. Amendment speech. That That is not. But the okay. Allows them, okay, to, we can allows them to break. But we can agree. That's not even we can the agree most, in, most important aspect. But what this. about when they're asked to move and they refuse to we'll, move? We'll, we're going we're to examine that and you're going to see exactly where I'm going with this. Okay. I haven't seen any of this. Just so you now, these are the officers and per their statements, this is where they're having this conversation, something they can't play in this in this area and asking to leave. Now, are they playing at a place of business inside their easement or, or no? They, they, they or weren't. No? They, 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 before they this is captured, I don't know what they were, they hadn't even really started playing. They said they would like tune in their instruments kind of on the sidewalk right there and the officers came. They really were just starting. They hadn't really been playing. As you can see, people passing by, they're not really stopping, they're not playing now. And as you'll see, within a few minutes, they begin to leave, which the officers who were involved in this, particularly Officer Bush, but uh, I believe that's Officer Wright, uh, and I don't want to mistake the names, but all these officers have been interviewed, they all say they left, and it was the encounter, as far as they were concerned, was over with. And, they, and Sergeant, I mean, Officer Bush explicitly stated when they left, he had no intention on citing them or arresting them. My question right now while we're watching this, so are you saying that they're they're free to leave and they just well, I'll, decide I'll, to leave? I'll let you make your own determination because the video is going to capture You see, I this, see one of them. This, yeah. is, this is, is Jonathan Work, I mean Joseph Workman, who's okay. already kind of late. You'll see as it plays out and I can provide some narration for you because I've seen this many, many times. Okay. So now you got more officers showing up. Mm -hmm. Not the original four. Right, other officer came who, um, I believe that's Musina, right there, who's walking away, who said they came just because they said they may need, officers need additional help. I'm not really sure why, but as you can see there, because that's a, 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 another subject issue of their complaint, he's holding a cell phone and it appears that he's recording these officers, or at least attempting to. And again, that's just a, that's a point of clarification because I've seen this many times. And if you can see that, and do you acknowledge that it appears that that's what they're doing, Captain? Mm hmm Okay. And then that's, that's he's leaving. Without any audio, we don't know what's being right, but, said. But there can be now. I mean, they're obviously the letting them leave, right? Right. So he's riding his bike away, and officers are still here. So at this point, Captain DeSouza, would you feel that they these officers had placed them under arrest at that point, or conclude they would be arrested? I don't know. But on your interpretation of what you see here, them riding away their bikes and officers not pursuing them in any way, or even really looking in their direction as they're leaving out. I think that's highly unlikely that they're under arrest when they're still here and they're leaving at this point. They're like far and they're not following them, they're not pursuing them. 
So it's highly unlikely. And as you can see in that corner, that's you in the white shirt that's approaching it while these officers are still back here. And then there's going to be what appears to be some sort of physical encounter coming up. It's hard to see because that phone, that telephone pole is going to obscure it. And I will show at this point, just to give a better angle, there's another video that shows a more close-up of this encounter but doesn't capture that first part. That's why I showed you guys this first. This video, which is the same camera, just a close-up, will show a little better. And again, that would be you, Captain DeZuba, approaching okay. them while these officers are still back. Okay. And then you'll see some sort of, I don't know what happens because that pole breaks it, stops it. Are they the approaching comment. the captain or is the captain approaching them though? They're approaching each other. They're heading okay. in the same direction. All right. I don't know how you could. Well, that's what I mean. I, do we know? They were approaching each other. Yes, we know that. You could ask him. And then you'll see that some sort of physical. And then they, they're going to be taken. One is going to be go, taken that way by our officer. As you can see, he'll take his bike. And this, he's Jonathan, Joseph, Jonathan Workman is going to be placed against the wall there. And they will be handcuffed. Shortly thereafter, as you see, his hands are being held and they're being detained. So let me just pause it there. Now, again, in, when you were uh, initially interviewed on September 11th of 2019 by OPS, you stated at the 254 mark that the complainants were coming towards you and the officers informed you that the complainants were under arrest. Correct. And that's your, still your statement here today? Yeah, that's what they told me. Okay. Uh, if, let me ask, hold that real quick. So, I, I know you show him coming up. You know, somebody goes and interacts with you to have you come that way that you're not seeing on this. Is that when you're told that they're under arrest or when? When, when none of the officers who were involved in that initial conversation with the complainants came to. Captain Dezuba prior to this. They were all back here, as you can see. But I'll have to go to the other video because that this is just a snippet of that part, or more of a close-up of that. But none of those officers came towards him. As you can see, if they had been under arrest at that point, there's it's highly unlikely that the officers would let them pedal off on their bikes and create that sort of separation without even really looking in their direction. But more importantly, these same officers have already given statements that they that these individuals were not under arrest at that point. That uh, Officer Bush, who Captain Dezuba said informed him that they were under arrest, stated something just to the contrary, that he had not only were they not under arrest or had been cited, he had no intentions on doing though no because they left. That was his statement. And that's not anything that I'm interpreting. That's what Patrol Officer Bush this is says. This is after you show him this video? Pardon me? That they, I don't know. This was during their uh, IA uh, interview. They said, he said that I'm I have saying, no did, intentions. Did, did he change his comment after he saw the actual video? Do we know? No, he hasn't changed any comment, but I, I don't think that would that would attack or hurt his credibility. Well, they changed. do get arrested. Does any of the officers say that, yeah, that we, we, we booked them and arrested them? Yes. Yeah. Officer, Patrol Officer Bush says he, he arrested them under uh, the order of, of Captain DeZuba. He didn't know why. And the other officer said, I don't know what act of disorderly conduct they committed. It had to have happened after the initial encounter at the where they were playing the guitars. They said it had to happen the disorderly conduct had to be attributed to something that happened when they encountered Well that's Captain and that's Zuba. why I was asking. And that's what these Does six, seven officers all say that same thing. They go to him or Captain DeZuba, obviously somebody tells him that's why he's coming there. Well or no. Captain DeZuba here today said I mean, Officer Bush told him that, and Officer Bush. I know, says, but can we that 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 can, ha that can we go happen. back and ask ask the questions again? He just made a comment that Officer Bush said to arrest him, mm -hmm. but you didn't go over anything as far as where was he when when he finds out what did he find out was wrong? He's telling you that Officer Bush said they were under arrest. Right. Just just a few more and, questions. I well, yeah. 
I, I, you have to understand, I've interviewed Captain DeZuba. Captain DeZuba, at mm -hmm. the 509 point of his interview here, said that plans were arrested for disorderly conduct for playing music. Now, as you can see, when they would play the music, they were asked to leave, and they, while they didn't comply immediately, they did comply and leave. And the officers who were involved in that initial encounter all state that they were free to go, that they weren't placed under arrest, nor were they going to be cited. And that subsequent to that, Captain DeZuba ordered them to arrest them and cite them. Mm -hmm. No, that is not true. I didn't order anybody to arrest anybody. Right, that was my question. So those officers who said that, yeah, those are the they questions. had to be mistaken or lying because that's what they consistently all say. So once they, these officers inform you that they should be arrested for disorderly conduct, something that's ordinarily a minor misdemeanor, why were they not just cited and because as you see, according to their citations, they refuse to give any information. I understand that. And that or provide be, any identification. Right. And, that, and, and that's, that's been borne out that eventually they did provide before they were transported, but initially they did not. However, when you encounter them and the officers, whether it's Officer Bush or any other officer, yeah, I might you, be mistaken. they're under name. arrest. What would they be under arrest for at that point? Because they hadn't even been op given an opportunity at they, that point to give their identification that would then move this from a non-arrestable citation-only offense to an arrestable offense. Because at the time you encounter them, as you saw in the video, minutes later they're being detained and then can, handcuffed. Can, can I ask but they a had, question? These officers never had asked them for their identification, according to the officers, the video, at that point. The video that you, you have there, that you've obtained, I mean, does it, does it show from the time they arrived, the policemen arrived with them the whole time? Or yes. is this going on yes, the that, last that shows, as you can see, minute? Huh? It shows them. I didn't, I didn't notice. It shows the officers walking up to them. Approaching them is approaching what I'm getting them. at. You see so, that? So the whole time this is live. Right. You see the officers. You, you see that, right? This, they're walking up to them initially. Mm -hmm. This is the first encounter. And they come from back there. You, did you see that? I guess. Yeah. Okay, I'll start it over to make sure. Can you see okay. those officers yep. approaching yep. them as they're here? They can see the bike wheel. I that's them. I honestly, okay, I see like the bike or the whatever. Bike wheel, I don't see them. them. Yeah, because they're kind of standing back mm -hmm. right here. Not till they step further out where you see them. But this is the mm -hmm. beginning when they first approach them. Okay. And as you saw, after some time, they leave and the officers stay here. And these all these so, officers state that, that, that they weren't under so arrest at that So there's time. like four officers there, right? At right this now, time it's four, roughly. yes. It and then four. why do you think four more officers come up? They said they just received a, a call for additional help and they didn't know why. Know Who did why. they get that call from? I, I would like to... They said it just came over the radio. I don't, I don't know. So like somebody just said, but as you, you can know, see, hey, we need assistance over here? Um, that's what they're saying, but of course I'm I'm not there. I'm going on what these officers have I'm already just given to, in, in recorded I'm statements. I'm just trying to point out something that seems a little. Well, as you can see, a little fishy. Anything that these, if they were doing something that, where where you're trying to intimate that officer with, that walks away over there, is he on a, a radio back no. there? He's got his arms it's crossed. Arms crossed, crossed as you can see. Okay, I didn't see it until he turned around, so I apologize. I'm just wondering, somebody somebody calls out to say, hey, Whether somebody's they over here for whatever reason, who for knows? For whatever reason, we, it, it would that something that would say these two gentlemen caused such a, 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 a disturbance. issue or disturbance that it necessitated additional mm -hmm. officers, that would be incongruent so, with what's captured in this video, and it would be inconsistent with them then letting them just ride their bikes off if it was something that significant mm -hmm. that necessitated it. But the call could have went out, but this call right now that you see Bush doing, that's the call to get a supervisor, as you see him on his radio. Okay. Because the, the complaints requested one. That's Bush? That's Bush right, right there. Right there, okay. So he calls for a supervisor. And because now they requested the, one. Now okay. so all of a sudden request, yeah, the kids want to leave now. Because they felt that they were in their rights and that these officers were unaware of the, the law. Because these individuals okay. have, have done this street like, performing many times, but, so they knew what their conduct but, to be lawful. But my point is, when Officer Bush radios, possibly to the captain, we don't know who he 
if he just puts out the call for other officers, or does he put out the call for the supervisor? For the supervisor, we do know because this is what Officer Bush says. Okay, when does he say he called for a supervisor? Yes. Okay. When he says that, then all of a sudden, as soon as he gets on there, that the one young man gets his bike and starts going, but then he comes right back. He moves and he stays right there. Right, because he was waiting on his brother and he eventually, okay. they both leave and as you can see, when they both leave and I'll just try to, since we just watched this, fast forward it to that point so we don't have to see that all again. He's there. Mm -hmm. Now, what per what Captain Zuba saying that this person at this point is under arrest. I am not saying that. Well, that, that they informed you that they I did not arrested. have anything to do with this initial encounter. Right. But when I walk up the scene, the officers, the guys are there, the officers are there. There are a bunch of officers, and I say, What's going on? And they're like, These they're people arrest. are under arrest. Right. And I said, If they're under arrest, why aren't they cuffed? And then that's when you see the struggle because we tried to cuff them. Right. And at that point, did you know what these, did they say why they were under arrest? No. Okay, you just thought it. Maybe. I was called to that scene. I didn't have anything to do with this initial encounter. Right, that's that's obvious, and that, uh, that's what the complaints say that they requested a supervisor on the scene. That's what Officer Bush says that they requested, and then Officer Bush further said he radioed for a supervisor per their request. As you can see here, they're literally riding their bikes. They're not just walking. I'll go back briefly. They're literally riding their bikes. Well, he's, he's walking. Riding. He's riding his bike. But away, that kid's walking. Right, away from the officers. And the officers are still right here. They're not really even watching them at this point. So to say, you know, that who, that Bush or whomever said they were under arrest at this point, that is not consistent with, because that's you just now coming. And when you first get to them, the only officer that's even in There's the two officers to my left. Right, but those officers were never yeah, up but there. but I don't know this. But they're walking with you. Towards them, they, I'm not no watching. Way those officers I'm not watching. Been, I'm watching two people coming toward me. Right, but are you saying that one of those two officers who are walking with you in that direction towards them are the one who never encountered them? I'm up not there? saying anything. I'm just saying there were a lot of people around. Right, and I'm watching two people coming toward me. All I know is some officers called for a supervisor. That's right. all I know. Right, and then when we, everybody catches up, I'm like, "What's going on? These guys, these guys asked to be arrested." Wait a minute. You're saying when, that when they came up, the police said these guys asked to be arrested? Yeah. I go, are they under arrest? They go, yeah. And I'm like, why aren't they cuffed? But they didn't tell you what they would be arrested for, just per their, the complaint's request. Yeah, it was very short. It was very short. These guys are known agitators. Not, we didn't know this at the time, but this is what they do. They have a website. Have you seen it? Right, but the Chardon Times, they do this all over everywhere. Do what? They bait policemen. They right. sit there and then they motherfuck them and they say, I have a right to be here, blah, blah, blah. So as I understand this, once we got down to the van, once these guys were cuffed and we had their property and we walked down to the prisoner van, that's when they said, we're going to sue you, you have no right, U.S. code, blah, 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 and they're throwing all this legal stuff which in my interpretation is why Bush called for a boss in the first place. No. Because once they start well, throwing out U.S. codes, your average officer we, doesn't understand that. We don't have to uh, provide our own interpretations as to why Bush called for a supervisor. He gives his own statement. He said he called for a supervisor because they requested one because they were telling the officers that they were within their constitutional rights. Correct. And he them. doesn't know what their constitutional rights regarding whether or not this is a permanent or a private event or anything like that. Right, but Mike Kozar came over to you and said they're not allowed to play. Right, but Bush says when they departed from them, he felt the encounter was over and he had no intentions on citing them or arresting them. And he said whatever happened that caused them to be arrested had to be something that occurred with you and per your orders. Now, again, it's not clear what happens here, but eventually... They tried to put the handcuffs on him and then the guys resisted being handcuffed. And so they were eventually handcuffed. Correct. And and taken to jail. Now, my thing, when they were initially handcuffed, um, were they arrested at that point? I assumed, by what I was told, they were arrested. They just weren't handcuffed. Right. Once we put the handcuffs on them, we walked them to the prisoner van and 
took right. off the so rest when of their you, property. So that, what was captured there where they were kind of being detained and then handcuffed? At that point, I mean, that's my question to you, were they under arrest at that point? Yes, they were under arrest as they approached and me and as far why, as I knew. And why were they under arrest at that point? If you, knew. I wasn't the arresting officer. Okay. So the, the arresting officer would be the one who best to supply that rationale. Well, their ticket says, as you have a copy of it, I'm sure it was for right. disorderly conduct. Right. But and of course, they were found not guilty by the judge. Or they who signed the tickets. Who was the partners? Bush signed one and Del Vecchio right. signed one. Both of those I didn't officers, sign them. Both of those officers in their interview said they were ordered to do so. I did not order no, anybody to do anything. I understand. Both of those officers said you ordered them to do that. Well, I, I think he was on the record earlier. Uh, um, He's saying he didn't order it. That he thinks that they might have been mistaken. You asked, were they mistaken or were they lying? In other words, outright lying that you didn't tell them to arrest them. And the captain, I know, answered that. I remember that specifically. Right, he said, said mistaken. I, I believe that they are mistaken. Right. Yeah. But, but then that, then, then that certainly, that's, that's where his point that is, That certainly right? goes to that some of these officers obviously then did an improper arrest because they are arresting him with no basis for arresting them because... They are saying that they had no cause to arrest him until they to order to do so. So either way, there has to be some members who were involved in this who were, were improperly arrested them because they, they're saying they had no basis outside of that order to arrest them. And, the, and at that point, to arrest them for a non-arrestable offense is an issue because at that point, they were cuffed. They hadn't even given the opportunity to give their identification which would have caused this to now go from a non-arrestable offense to an arrestable offense, not because of the underlying conduct of the individuals, but because they didn't comply with the, the fact of so identifying I think that themselves. was on the record, too, that you said they refused to give ID. Correct. Right. But that's subsequent to being arrested for a non-arrestable offense. That's the, that's the issue. They, they were, and then, well, prior to even being transported, they did give their identification. They were run and confirm that, that that was them. And they were not, at that point, afforded the opportunity to just sign the citation and receive a court date. They were taken to jail. So I'm going to continue on. I don't want to kind of just keep beating that, that same Can issue. Can I ask one quick question, though? Were they, you're basing their comments off of their internal affairs statements? Is that Whose comments? The patrol officers. Right, at this point, but I'm going to interview them all as well. But they gave recorded interviews. Okay, I so I so you haven't done that. That was my next question. Well, you I have interviewed not... Officer Bush. Yes. Okay, so you interviewed Officer Bush because initially when we we received the complaint, mm -hmm. there was and that goes to other issues. Back when there was no when he concern. was interviewed, right? right. The first back, time back in August. Okay. When Captain Dezuba and Officer Bush, because those were the only identified officers. No one had WCS. No one made a report. There was nothing in learns. So there's no way to identify okay. who these other officers were who were involved in this. The, the complaints only could cite to Captain okay. Dezuba and Bush because his name and is on the, the original. The original interview with Bush then, your original, mm -hmm. that's the comments he gave that, that he didn't have them arrested or he didn't want to arrest them, that Captain Dezuba made him do that? Is that what you, you're saying? I, the, I the first... Well, that's pretty important. Well, when he goes to IA and gets shown that, does he change his story or is he consistent in what he said? I don't know Mr. Bush from Adam. I'm just asking a mere question. When he's interviewed by you the first time, mm -hmm. at the 516 mark of his interview with OPS, P.O. Bush stated that the complaints were arrested for disorderly conduct and that he was ordered to do so by Captain DeZuba. At the 516 mark of patrol officer Bush's interview with OPS on September. Okay, does this state when. September 19th of 2019. Does he state when Captain DeZuba orders him to arrest him? Meaning, is this down by the van? Is this he orders him to arrest him and he lets him ride their bikes away? Does he. Do you know that? I don't know. When, when, I don't, I don't when think this. That's relevant. When the order was given, per se? I don't think that's relevant when it was given. He's saying the order was given to arrest him. Well, I'm just and saying. He's also saying the reason that why he had no intention of doing so until so okay. ordered. The reason why I ask is because he's saying he didn't do that. So that's why I'm asking. If right. He, I'm if just, he I'm wasn't not, arresting him, why did he call for a boss? He said he called for a boss because the complainants requested a boss because they felt they were in their rights and they were hoping that a boss would clarify it because they felt that these officers did not know the law 
that permits them to do the kind that they're doing. So that's why they called for a supervisor. And, and Bush, is that's his statement, that he called per their request, not for because he had an issue or because he felt it was over once they, they, they finally left the scene, as you saw. Mm -hmm. So I have another question. Um, there were... Uh, what, what time's written on the citation for the arrest? That would be pertinent. No, not only that, but back to the part where he says, are these guys under arrest? Do you, uh, Jim, know, is that Bush you're asking, or just all of them in general? And who answers that question by saying yes? Is it even Bush that answers you, or you don't know? I, I don't remember that. But somebody, is, is one of the POs, does say yeah. Where a Bush? Yeah. And I'm sorry to get to that. In other words, okay. it could have possibly been, not been Bush, but somebody else chuckles in and says yes? Yeah, maybe I should wait on that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have told them they were under. They to cuff them if they weren't. If I wasn't I told they were under arrest, if I, I didn't off. see them. I didn't see them. I, you can't arrest them. I'm trying, to, don't I'm trying to wrap up the confusion. If somebody else inserted themselves saying, "Yeah, they're under arrest," and it wasn't Bush that said that to you, you know. Well, well, no officers who were interviewed said that they all say the same thing that they were only arrested because of Captain Zubo ordered them to do so. But also. Um, Captain DeZuba. It says 4 o'clock. Did you, um, 4 o'clock? At any time, did you order any officers who were working this detail to not activate the WCS? No. You never ordered anyone to do that? No. Tony Tomorrow had his on. Right. He's the only one did, and he said the reason why he had his on, he wasn't assigned to that detail. He works, I guess, community policing that's already working in the Little Italy area. Is that correct? And so he's the only one who had his on. That's the only reason we got this. No, there Except were for the only other officers who had theirs on were the officers who transported them, who was Officer Turner and Love. And in their IA interviews, Patrol Officer Bush, um, Patrol Officer Anderson, Dominique Anderson, badge number 1753, Patrol Officer Scott Carey, badge number 2400, Patrol Officer Richard DeVelchio Jr., badge number 1278. Patrol Officer Mussina, Patrol Officer Wright, Patrol Officer D Cody Dorner, badge number 269. Um, they all stated in their IA interviews that you ordered them not to activate their WCS camera. In fact, Officer Carey, It's a direct statement that they're saying the captain orders them not Every to turn Every last one on. make that direct. Not that somebody mm -hmm. had said we're not mm -hmm. turning our cameras Every on Every last during this one. Event. So he, the captain would have had to go to each one of them and directly say do not turn your camera Some of them on. said it was, it was said when they were getting off the, the bus because I guess they rode a bus to this detail and, and then um, and who the captain and then, met them at the bus. And I think it's Del Vecchio who says during the actual arrest, he goes up to Captain DeZuba and said, should I have my WCS on during this? And Captain DeZuba said, no. Again, these are what these officers are saying in their interviews. Each and every one of them, to a man, all said, including Officer Bush, every officer said they were ordered by Captain DeZuba to cut off their, to not activate their WCS. Each and every one of them. And none of them had their WCS on. Well, can he... And I, I asked him, that? yeah, he'd already answered it. He said he didn't order, issue that order. There was nothing else to say. Well, you threw one extra part in about them getting off when. So I asked you when this was said. You said getting off the bus. Some said, or, some said getting off the bus. Did, did you ever meet anybody getting off the bus? Mm -hmm. I mean, were and you some present when they no. get off a bus? And some said um, during this arrest, they were told, don't go on. Okay. Did you ever tell no. them during the arrest? Don't so those your officers, on? again, those officers who made those statements during their IA interviews, they were mistaken or lying about you issuing that order. I can't tell you why they said what they said. Well, I was standing next to, I believe, Cozart and Tomorrow. Tomorrow had his video on. Right, he's the only if, one. 
I had said anything during the arrest, it would be on, it would be on Tony's video. Well, if I said, don't turn your videos on, Tony would have shut his off. They well, could be saying whatever they want to protect but I think, themselves. I think Officer Tomorrow is saying he wasn't working that detail. Is that correct? He wasn't working that detail? No, he was working you? for me. He's working, though, for the city. He's working for the city. Right, for but me. not there. there. Detailed there. There. Detailed well, he said that's there. his ordinary. He he's, not working, he's not working part-time there. Some guys work secondary yeah. employment. Some guys work for this the was, city. None of this was secondary employment. All of this was working for the city. Pay and each officer right, said that was out a big overtime confusion. card. They well, all filled out an okay. overtime card. That's not a secondary employment issue. Okay, but At what all. he's what Tony he's, worked directly for me. Here's here's what he's saying. Now. Right, but that's his regular thing. And so officer okay, tomorrow okay. again. I'm not interjecting. My, right. I'm saying what officer tomorrow is okay, saying. Okay, let me. He's saying he he had his WCS on because he wasn't. Let me come there with them. I understand. Part of this. We agree. He had it on, and mm -hmm. he's working for the city. They're all working right. for the city. The other ones don't have it on, but. I agree with you. You're telling me he has his on because we know there's a camera footage. What right. the captain just said is his ca his camera is on would capture all of it. It's on while this is taking place while you're telling me that Mr. Uh,